Hello, I'm Charles Coves. Welcome to this week's episode of the Charles Coves Show, episode 138. Well, something different for you today, particularly for regular viewers, regular listeners. And thanks for being here, whether you're watching on YouTube or via podcast. In this week's episode, my big idea is to provoke your thinking about a range of issues to help you to decide more clearly the role you wish to play in your community, in your country. For years, via my role in the Global Energy Network Institute and based on the work of Buckminster Fuller, I have known that the foundational difference between richer and poorer countries is one word, electricity. When energy availability goes up, gross domestic product goes up. When energy availability goes down, GDP goes down. Energy supply globally is at risk and therefore so is your lifestyle because of deliberate strategies by globalists, activists and incompetent politicians. I have also known for years that the second foundational difference between richer and poorer countries is the quality of legal systems and the application of the rule of law. I say the rule of law is being attacked on many fronts. And this too will badly impact on your lifestyle as you presently know it. I hope that this episode helps in improving your thinking and in impacting upon your passion to take steps to preserve a way of life that you wish to preserve. Now, getting into the show, today is going to be different. I'm not going to give you six resources today. I'm not going to review the week. I'm going to cover a range of important, challenging issues that are exercising my thinking. And through that, I hope to provoke you to exercise your thinking. This is unusual and you never know what happens. You know, I hope you're not scared about me doing something risky. Maybe Julie will be scared about doing something risky. I'm going to be freewheeling upon up to 20 issues. I don't want to make this episode too long, but they're all important issues in my view. And the overriding thinking in this is how these issues are dramatically going to impact on your lifestyle, your life as you presently know it. But first, I have to have a cup of coffee. Mm. More importantly, a sip of coffee. First issue. Judges around the world are incorrectly applying the law in many, many cases. Your freedoms, your rights are guaranteed by the legal system. Judges are being politicised. Judges are, it's easy for a judge, and I was a lawyer for 20 years and I've been a legal strategist, For many years, I've been giving legal advice. For many years, I've been observing the law. I'm a lover of the law. It is very easy for a judge to prefer the government point of view on a particular matter than the proper application of law. And they can justify whatever they want. I could spend a whole series of shows on cases that have been badly decided by judges who have been politicised In many cases, and particularly in Victoria and Australia, poor quality judges being put in to positions of power, including the Fair Work Commission. So this is how politicians and devious devious schemers get the, the redesign of society. Judges stop applying the law properly. 
If you're unhappy with what's happening in life, you can go to the courts. But if the courts aren't going to behave properly, then you say, what am I going to do? The second issue is the inconsistency of application of the law. So law is complicated. There are seven layers of law. For most nations, it's the, se the seven layers are similar. They start off with natural law or God's law, unwritten. It's, 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 it's our deep spiritual laws. For example, one of them being you can't kill somebody. You can't take other people's goods, essentially tied up in the Ten Commandments, natural law. Then we have international law and treaties. That's level two. Level three is a national constitution. Level four is federal law. Australia has federal law. US has federal law. Level five is state laws. And Canada has provincial laws. Level six is regulations made under those state laws and federal laws. And then level seven is contractual law that applies to the contracts between individual employers and employees, for example, in the case of mandates of any description. Seven layers, very complicated. And judges who are politicized can very easily and very easily wrongly apply those laws inconsistently depending on who is before them. The third issue is there's evidence of people being badly treated by the law because of their beliefs. And the one specific example I'll bring to your attention, there are many, are the alleged protesters in the January 6, 2021 e episode at Washington at the time of inauguration of, of Biden or the announcement of Biden as the next president of the US. And are you aware that there are a large number of people in jail, never been charged, still in jail because they were arrested on January the 6th or subsequently? It is disgraceful. It is disgraceful that these people are in jail, not being charged, and yet looters and rioters on the streets in America are arrested and let out on bail immediately, including people accused of murder. That inconsistency is absolutely impacting on people's trust in the rule of law, in the application of law by blind justice. You'll have seen the just, you'll have seen the statue, the famous statue of justice of, of uh, the wo woman with blindfold over her eyes, that the law is applied uniformly to everybody. Once that stops happening, we are in big trouble. And let me assure you, it has stopped happening. Number four, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, passed a law, or his, his government passed a law that said doctors were not allowed to question the settled science. And if they did, they would lose their licenses to practice. You can know what all that's about. Outrageous law. Well, it, what the good news is that a federal judge has said this is unconstitutional. What is the settled science? But it shows you the attack that's being put on professionals to force them to act according to what politicians demand at the expense of patients, at the expense of the doctor-patient relationship. Doctors, if they don't stand up against this nonsense, they will cease to exist. Why? because evidence-based medicine will lead to robots doing doctoring. That's the game plan. And if doctors can't see that, then they deserve everything they get. And if, they, if this message to them helps them to see it, then we've got a chance. If doctors don't push back against this nonsense, we are in trouble. Number five, challenging issue. Novak Djokovic, tennis player in Australia, as I'm recording this show, he will be playing in the final of the Australian Open. I'm a huge admirer of him. I've met him on a number of occasions. I honour his commitment to his principles to avoid receiving something into his body that he did not want. He was willing to stand up for his principles at the 
risk of losing significant amounts of money. And even now, he can't, he's not allowed to fly into the US unless he has these poisons in his body. Full credit to him for standing up for principle. I urge all of you to understand what your principles are so you can stand up for them, even if it's going to cost you a dollar or a shekel. Item number six, there are still mandates in many government roles where people have to put poisons into their bodies. This is simply outrageous in the context of the evidence that is now around about how unsafe and ineffective these poisons are. All of us need to understand what a disgraceful government exercise this is in imposing these poisons into people's bodies from the start. But now in the light of all the evidence, I'm also going to mention in a moment that that it's still happening. It's remarkable. Number seven, excess deaths in Australia. Excess deaths, 17%. It's an extraordinary number. If this happened before the nonsense of the last three years, there would be the mainstream media would be covering it like crazy. It's ignoring these excess deaths. You and I know what it is. You and the only reason I'm not being totally open here is because of because of the censorship that is alive and well. I know what's causing excess deaths. It's the poisons that are being put into people and the consequences, the breakdown of immune systems, turbo cancers. Episode number eight ties into number seven, sudden itis, sudden unexplained deaths, fit athletes collapsing, fit athletes dying. I know what it is. I know what's causing it and I'm calling it out for what's causing it. And all of us have to not go along, oh, no one knows what's causing this sudden itis. I do. It's stuffing poisons into people's bodies against their wills. Number nine, particularly relevant for Australia. The government, the federal government wants to run a referendum on giving a voice to Aboriginals in the parliament. This is, this is madness. It is dividing the country and the prime minister keeps going around and say, it's the right thing to do. It is not the right thing to do. There is some 4% of Australia's population is Aboriginal and 11% of our federal politicians are Aboriginal. So they're overrepresented. And their views are easily expressed in Parliament. And so this nonsensical idea of an undefined voice is nonsensical. And I oppose it. I urge everybody who thinks about it to oppose it. It's not nice at all. It's not the right thing to do. And all you have to do is look at New Zealand and its basket case on the way that it's managing the Maori and the veto rights of, of Maori in many ways to be deeply concerned about this referendum. Number 10 is the offence industry. Don't say anything that can offend another person. I say absolutely speak your truth and be willing to offend others. One of my earlier episodes, I talked about standard responses to anyone who says I'm offended. I say to anybody who's offended, bullshit. I say to anybody who's offended, deal with it yourself. I'm not interested in whether anybody's offended by what I say and nor should you. And my number one advice to you is if someone says I'm offended by what you said, never apologize. Do not apologize. The standard response, two standard response out of, I've developed now nine standard responses. If someone says to you, I'm offended, you can say, well, I'm offended that you said you're offended. So now we're both offended. What are you going to do about that? And a second simpler answer is when someone says, I'm offended, your answer can be, I don't give a shit. Number 11, Bill Gates was in Australia last week. Bill Gates, Okay, the second biggest funder of the World Health Organization. He's predicting a bigger, badder pandemic coming. How would he know? I wonder how he would know. He's pushing for government to invest more in 
big farmer. I wonder why. I know exactly why. He is one of the huge investors in pharma and has, pu- and has publicly gloated about how much money he's made out of, out of funding big pharma. Number 12, the World Health Organization is pushing hard to get sovereignty over your nation, over my nation of Australia, so that the WHO can declare anything he wants to declare and governments are then bound to act according to the WHO's requirements, an unelected body that cannot be trusted. Tell your local politicians you do not want to cede sovereignty of your nation to an unelected body of technocrats, bureaucrats. Issue number 13, a digital ID is constantly being talked about how great a digital ID will be and then the reduction of cash. So what's going to happen is very quickly a social credit system. So you'll have, if you don't have a digital ID, you won't be able to function in normal society. And if you don't have a digital ID, ID, you won't be able to use your credit cards. And if you're a bad boy, you won't be able to use your credit card outside certain areas. Number 14, this evil is probably worse than the whole C-19 game. And this is 15 minute, 20 minute cities. This idea is promulgated by the United Nations smart cities bullshit. And it's designed to keep you in an area no more than 20 minutes walking distance from your home. That's there and back. Why? so that you reduce your consumption of energy, of electricity. Why? Because we've got to save the planet. Why? Because there's a climate emergency. Well, again, I call BS on that. You must understand what a threat this 15-minute city, 20-minute city is to you. It is evil. Go to your local council, push back, go to every council meeting, read what's on the agenda, push back against your councillors, write to them, call them, and tell them that you absolutely oppose this 15-minute city rule. It is evil. 16, this whole issue of climate emergency. Now, I've been involved in renewable energy since 1992. I love the planet. I've been involved in organic farming since 1976 when we bought our family farm. I've said in the intro that when electricity availability for a nation goes up, its GDP goes up. And when GDP goes up, birth rates come down. So what's being proposed? A reduction of electricity. Cost goes up, affordability goes down. People can't use electricity. They can't heat their homes. And trust me, there are far more people die from the cold than from the heat. There is no climate emergency. We can clean up this planet but then what's happening is this push to get rid of anything that emits co2 you see co2 is life-giving it is not a poison so so stopping the availability of electricity in the name of protecting the planet is going to lead to a massive impact on your lifestyle will lead to deaths all in the name of a non-existence non-existent climate emergency I don't think so, but you need to understand what the arguments are. Number 16, this is a challenging issue to learn about climate. And one of the recent conversations that I have watched that is most instructive is by Jordan Peterson with Richard Lindzen, L-I-N-D-Z-E-N. It goes for one hour, 47 minutes, well worth watching, unpacks, the lies that surround this whole concept of a climate emergency, which you'll record was climate heating, climate cooling, climate heating, then climate change, and then climate emergency. Don't be sucked in. Item 17, Senator Malcolm Roberts addressed a group that I moderate each week of medical doctors and scientists. And Malcolm Roberts is an Australian senator, and he spoke plainly. He said, most politicians are idiots. They're not elected, they're selected. I despair about the quality of politics in most countries. These politicians are there because it's a cushy job. We need to hold these selected politicians to account. Each one of us has to take an interest in what they do, in what decisions they make. 
otherwise they're going to improve approve this climate emergency restrictions these 20 minute city nonsense and lots of other things why because they will benefit personally i call them out on this their personal benefits are enormous they pretend to be looking after us item 18 it is salutary to note the total almost total lack of and comments and announcements by ceos of major corporations against anything government is doing it's remarkable and i call on these ceos i say they are acting out of integrity they are acting to harm society they are acting solely to benefit their own pockets get as much money as they can from these big companies most of which are public listed companies and then pretend that they're going to be able to live life comfortably into the future. I say their grandchildren, their, chil their children, grandchildren and great grandchildren will pay a big price for the silence of business leadership that has failed to push back against outrageous government and politician behavior and the behavior of the technocracy, the technocrats. Number 19. The airline industry is being decimated by pilots who have been injured. I'm acting in a number of cases here in Australia, giving strategic advice to pilots who have lost their jobs because they refuse to have poisons injected in them. The number of injured pilots are increasing dramatically and that's putting airline safety at risk, trust me, in a big, big way. Government safety authorities are not doing their jobs because they're part of the government, of course. It is more risky for you to fly now than ever in the past. And number 20, the challenging, the 20th challenging issue that's at the top of my mind is is it's challenging to speak up. It's challenging to share these ideas with you. It's challenging to fight for what you want. But your lifestyle is at risk. If you sit back and hope that everything is going to be well, it's a forlorn hope. Electricity, crucial, at risk. Rule of law, crucial, deeply at risk. Think about what's important for you to do, for the challenging steps that you think are important from this range of 20 issues and all the other matters that you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the crucial ways to increase your ability to do this is by being healthy. When you are healthy and passionate, you have unlimited energy. Your body enables you to fight the fight that you have decided you wish to fight. And each one of us making these individual decisions motivated by our own intuition, say that's the fight, that's the three fights that I wish to take. That's how we preserve and improve our lifestyle. If we don't do that, we will lose our lifestyles. So that was today's big idea. No six tools. I've given you plenty of ideas to think about to ponder, to meditate upon. And I urge you to meditate upon them so that you can live life on your terms. My aim for this show is to inspire you, to provoke you, to motivate you, to live life on your terms. Please visit our websites, covest.com, charlescovest.com. My books are available there, Passionate People Produce, and passionate performance and if you enjoy this show thank you for, for watching and listening but please share it with your family your friends your work colleagues thanks for being with us i won't review the week because many of the ideas that the elements that have been happening during the week are encompassed in those 20 items may your week be full of thought-provoking insights accessing your intuition of passion, of challenge, and a deep appreciation for this gift of life that we have here in 2023. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye.
And now, for viewers and listeners who want to know more about my background and what else I do with my life as well as the foundational principles of the show. Here we are. Since 1993, when I left my legal career, a career that I love to become Australasia's passion provocateur, I have inspired and provoked and educated and motivated people all over the world to discover and pursue their passion. I have helped people via the books that I've written, via speeches at conferences, via in-depth team building programs, workshops, over one, two or three days or over three months, six months. And I've coached people of all ages, one-on-one -on -one from small, medium and large enterprises, government enterprises, helping them to identify the often tiny changes that can make a massive difference. One of my core principles is that freedom is what makes us truly human. That's why one of the th greatest threats that government imposes on you to force you to observe its laws is the threat of imprisonment, the loss of your freedom. Just think about that. Government says, if you don't behave yourself, we're going to put you in jail. No, no, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to lose my freedom. That's a reminder to you of why freedom is so important. Without freedom, you and I are not much different to animals. If you were locked up in a cage for the rest of your life, how, how different would you be to an animal? This commitment to fighting for freedoms for all people is carried out by me th made primarily through five channels. Number one, preserving the freedom to pursue your passion. Number two, inspiring you to be able to be free through excellent health. Number three, helping preserve freedom throughout the world through the expansion of industrial hemp, a magnificent agricultural crop, an almost miraculous crop that enables every community to thrive independently of government. In this way, the power of government to take away freedom is minimized. Number four, fighting for freedom through legal strategies. So I do work as a legal strategy consultant as an interface between clients and their lawyers. And number five, as chairman of the Australian Institute of Comedy and as a board member of the Australian Cartoon Museum, fighting for the freedom of thought and speech through uncensored comedy and humour, through avoiding political correctness in the comedic space. When you block freedom of speech, freedom of thought, that's the beginning of the end of your freedoms. The foundational principles for the Charles Covey Show are founded on the formula SA plus P equals S. Your self-awareness added to your passion will guarantee that you are successful. And the best definition of success I have found in life is that success is the progressive realization of your worthy ideals, the progressive realization of your worthy ideals. This show is also guided by Socrates' famous principle and quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. You can see I'm wearing my red jacket, I wear my red jacket for all my shows. Red is the color of passion, so that when you see me on the YouTube version, it reminds you that when you see red in your life, you ask yourself the question, am I pursuing my passion? What am I passionate about? Am I still passionate about that? What might I newly be passionate about? Each week I explore one big idea that can change your life. And it's just one big idea because there's a chance you will remember it. If I give you too many ideas, then we, we get confused and we don't do anything. Clarity leads to power. Confusion kills passion. Each week I share simple and practical resources that you've heard me describe in the earlier part of the show. A spiritual tip, a health tip, lyrics of a song, a book, a quote, and of course humour. This show is not politically correct, I have no intention of being politically correct, and I love certain addictions, including my addiction to great coffee, mm. my addiction to exercise, my addiction to reading, and my addiction to certain other 
unmentionable in public type behaviours. Who would know what they are? This show definitely subscribes to the view that we have a spiritual life. So if you don't like discussion of spirituality, this show is not for you. I promise you that I don't include anything in this show that I don't consider to be true and that I have not found to be useful in the work that I've done over the past 28 years, but also over the past 50 years in business, as a lawyer, as a consultant advisor. I only want to share stuff with you that is of value to you. Finally, if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to contact me at charles at Again, thanks for watching and listening to my show. Bye.